What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome back to a brand new Fallout 4 build on Fudge Muppet. The Hunter has probably been our most requested build this month on social media and it's all about stalking and killing the biggest, most feared wasteland monstrosities. Speaking of stalking, I strongly recommend you check out our favourite Fallout 4 faction video if you want to gain an insight into our personal Fallout 4 opinions and also if you want to see what we look like and who we are. There are actually two of us on Fudge Muppet, and if you don't believe me, the link to the video is in the description, so be sure to check that out. Not only does the hunter stalk and kill big irradiated creatures, but he also tracks down humans if need be. Do not be misled into believing this humble looking man will only be chasing animals. He'll locate whoever he has to, whenever he has to, and deal with them accordingly. He's definitely not a bad man, but will give you heaps of role-playing options to make him darker or lighter depending on how you want to play. This build is great for anyone wanting a Lone Wanderer playthrough, but also for those who are stuck between playing a shotgun build and a sniper build. The majority of this build's playstyle involves using a scoped hunting rifle to kill from a long range, however he's also got a combat shotgun to blast enemies away if they surprise him and get too close. The shotgun can also be used if you simply want to clear out a tight building filled with pesky humans. Did I mention explosives? He's got some of those too. This character has been through a lot and he's going to have the scars to show for it. The hunter can start with a scar or two from the military and as you come face to face with death claws and Yalgawise throughout your playthrough, you can visit the plastic surgeon to add even more scars. This is a must for anyone who loves role playing. As for power armor, this build does not use any, and if you're forced to hop into a random set during battle you can, however the hunter certainly prefers not to. In the description you'll find timestamp leaks to help you navigate throughout the video, and if you want to go back to a section to remember information or skip through spoilers, this will let you. Remember if you love what we do, then subscribe because we've got heaps more of it coming your way. A lot of Automatron DLC content too. Now, let's get into the Hunter. The Hunter grew up on a farm in Coleraine and was born into a large family with three other siblings. They were much older than him, however he was still very close with them and they all spent plenty of time together. Their farm wasn't huge and because they had plenty of family members to help out, life wasn't all too difficult. They lived simply and tended to avoid any of life's pricier extras. Family was what mattered most and often the hunter would enjoy spending time with his cousin who lived in the city. His cousin would visit on weekends and they would spend most of their time toying with guns and timing their ability to shoot down rows of bottles. The hunter's cousin much preferred using a pistol as opposed to a rifle and he was ridiculously good with it. Weapons like rifles and shotguns were a large part of the hunter's lifestyle as he would use them to kill any undesirables that came into the farm. This was a common occurrence and while their lives weren't hard, they couldn't afford to have their crops ravaged by pests. The hunter was taught to shoot by his father, but his father didn't just shoot out of necessity, he loved to hunt recreation and he passed down this talent and love for hunting to his son. The hunter was schooled from home and was taught everything he knew by his parents. They were reasonably smart people. Let's just say city folk would be surprised by how much they knew about things unrelated to their lifestyle. As the hunter progressed throughout his teenage years, he started to spend a lot more time tracking down and slaying various beasts with his father. Black bears were amongst the most impressive of their kills, and by the time he was an adult, the hunter could skillfully shoot over long distances with a rifle, and knew how to identify various animal tracks and stalk through different terrains without making a lot of noise. As time went by, however, the hunter became a little bit too accustomed to his general way of living. He didn't mind life on the farm and he definitely enjoyed hunting, however it was time to experience something new. He wanted a little more money, a little more comfort and a lot more excitement. He wanted a bigger purpose in his life and with all these new desires adding up, the hunter decided to join the military. His parents were supporting of the decision, especially considering the fact that the war with China was worsening and they feared for their own safety. The hunter believed he had some transferable skills such as stealth and marksmanship and soon he discovered that this was certainly the case. Spending many years in the military, the hunter improved upon his existing skill base immensely. He also learned multiple new skills, especially in regards to fighting against other humans. One thing he had never used before was explosive weaponry, however by the end of his military career he was an expert. Many people would even put him in charge of setting mines, especially because he could sneak around planting them without drawing too much attention to himself. As expected, the hunter ended up in a lot of close calls, however using his talents developed from the farm he managed to live. When his service ended, he had a new perspective on life and 
and an even larger appreciation for his family. He headed home to the farm to see his parents and got straight back into his old hobby of hunting. While one would assume this was safer than the military, the hunter found himself in a near-death experience while he was out looking for a deer. He was very close to one of the animals and just about to pull the trigger of his gun when a bullet soared right past him, only missing him by two feet. He yelled out for the shooter to stop and the shooter immediately came running out apologetically. The shooter was a young woman and the hunter was furious that she had not seen him and that she had missed the deer by so much her bullet had almost hit him. She was brand new to hunting and it was clear that she shouldn't be in control of any dangerous weapons. Eventually after the hunter had calmed down he felt sorry for the young woman and decided to help her out, teaching her how she could improve her skills. He didn't want her killing someone by accident. She was also extremely attractive and he couldn't help but like her. While a bit too uncoordinated she was a very nice girl and over time the two began to see each other and formed a better relationship. Only one year passed before they decided to get married and the story of the hunter almost dying was expected to be a family story that would be told for decades to come. Eventually they moved into a house and had a child and they lived a very happy life and the hunter believed he had definitely found himself a situation he was pleased with. Unfortunately for him this all came to an end when the war escalated too far and the bombs began to fall. Before getting into the motives, role playing and faction choices of this build, I will warn you that I'll be revealing all of the factions the hunter can work with. I'm going through every joinable faction in the game and telling you how the hunter could work with them, so if you don't want to know what factions exist in the game then skip this part using the timestamps we've provided. All of the storyline based stuff will be kept very vague. Leaving the vault and entering the commonwealth, the hunter will immediately follow his senses and start hunting down his own son. He wants to find Sean and he needs something to distract his mind from what has just occurred. In terms of faction and main quest choices however, it really depends on what kind of character you want to play. If you're playing a more passive hunter who makes peace with his loss and embraces his new situation, then you're going to want to stick with the Minutemen or the Railroad. Within the Railroad you'll be able to use your skills to track down the Institute and you'll also enjoy the family atmosphere it provides. Each member of the Railroad is unique with different roles and responsibilities. Everyone looks out for each other too and their cause is noble. Alternatively, you you can look out for common folk like settlers by joining the Minutemen. The settlers could remind the hunter of his family, especially because many of them take part in farming. He could focus on providing unity in a land that has been torn apart. If you choose to side with the Minutemen, you should still stay on good terms with the Railroad. The Minutemen also seem like the kind of people who would admire hunting a lot more than the Railroad would. The Minutemen also need protection from big wasteland creatures and the hunter will be killing these for recreation already, so he may as well do it for a purpose as well. If you want your hunter to become a lot colder after what has happened, he could easily join up with the Brotherhood of Steel. He doesn't have to wear power armor or showcase a very patriotic attitude, he can simply act like a gun for hire who believes in their cause and wants to help them hunt down and kill irradiated monsters, ghouls, super mutants, synths and the institute in general could also be stalked and destroyed mercilessly by the hunter. Speaking of the Institute, they are the final option available. Joining the Institute would work very well for a hunter build who became more emotionless and hard since he left the vault. For role playing purposes, he could act like a courser, hunting down sins for the Institute and assassinating any threats to the organization. Regardless of which faction you choose, do keep in mind that this build loves to hunt and will do what he can to follow his passion in life, regardless of how moral you decide to make him. Stalking his way into the wasteland, the hunter will begin with 1 strength, 9 perception, 4 endurance, 3 charisma, 5 Intelligence, 4 Agility, and 2 Luck. He's going to get the Special Book in Sanctuary and use it on Endurance, making it 5, and he's going to be getting the Perception Bobblehead really early, making the stat 10. This will give the Hunter access to the Concentrated Fire perk. Be sure to get all the Special Bobbleheads as soon as you think you can, we've got links in the description on where to find everything this build will need. One Strength represents the lack of Brute Force the Hunter has, and you can roleplay that this was damaged even further by the Vault 111 technology. Strength simply isn't something that the build needs and will be countering the low carry weight by using the Lone Wanderer perk. 9 Perception which will become 10 very quickly represent the aware nature of the hunter, his keen eye and his ability to predict the movement of his targets as he calculates his shots. This will improve our VATS accuracy and give us access to some sensational perks such as Penetrator. 4 Endurance has been chosen to give the hunter a bit of bulk so he doesn't die instantly when attacked and 3 Charisma is mainly chosen so he can access the Lone Wanderer perk. He's fairly average when it comes to conversation. 5 Intelligence displays his decent brain power and ability to think outside of the box when it comes to hunting. It will also allow him to level up at an acceptable pace. 
4 Agility will allow for a decent amount of vas usage and gives us access to some great agility perks. It also portrays the Hunter's stealthy lightweight movement. We'll be increasing agility a lot as we level up throughout the game. Tulak has simply been chosen for the Scrounger perk. So let's start exploring the perk choices of the Hunter all the way from level 2 to level 50. If you want to change any perk choices, for example if you want Hacker and Locksmith, then go ahead. That said, here's how we built the Ultimate Hunter character. Straight away we choose to invest in Rifleman for 20% more non-auto rifle damage as killing with a scoped rifle is the bread and butter of this build. We're then going to invest in three amazing perception perks in a row. The first of these is Concentrated Fire and at the first rank it's going to give you plus 10% accuracy for every attack on the same body part you target in VATS. This is highly useful for ensuring those miracle headshots. The next awesome perception perk is Penetrator which we recently made a video on and this is going to allow the hunter to use VATS to target enemy body parts that that are blocked by cover. This will however have a decrease in accuracy, but remember that critical hits hit all the time, so you can use this to pull off some ridiculous kills. The other great thing about this perk is that creatures' bodies count as cover which you can shoot through, so if you're fighting a Mylurk from behind, you can shoot through its shell to hit its head. You can also shoot through a set of power armor to target and hit the fusion core. At level 5 we get the sniper perk, and at rank 1 it will allow you to hold your breath for longer when aiming with scopes. As you can see, we've picked sensational perks early on so that you can get straight into enjoying the playstyle of this build. At level 6 we're getting a favorite perk of mine, which is Night Person, and this is going to give us plus two perception and plus two intelligence between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. This will increase our VAT's accuracy and allow us to level faster. Both are great improvements for the Hunter. We're then going to be getting two ranks of Sneak, which will make the Hunter 30% harder to detect and no longer trigger floor-based traps. Next up is the second rank of Rifleman to make our non-automatic rifles do 40% more damage and ignore 15% of target armor. Keep in mind that our combat shotgun is also affected by Rifleman as long as it's not automatic. Finally, at level 10, we have one of the best perks in the game, Lone Wanderer. And starting off, we'll take 15% less damage from everything and have plus 50 carry weight, all when adventuring without a companion. Next up, it's time to start ensuring that we never run out of bullets. We're going with the Scrounger perk to find more ammunition in containers around the Commonwealth, and at level 11, we're getting the first rank of Gun Nut. Following this, we get the second rank of Gun Nut, and with two ranks of this perk, we'll be able to make our guns do more damage, and also have access to the suppressor modification for some weapons. This is what makes our gun silenced and allows us to take advantage of our next perk choice, which is Mr. Sandman. Mr. Sandman rank 1 makes silenced weapons do an additional 15% sneak attack damage. This is great for our shotgun and our hunting rifle, and this perk gives us the ability to instantly kill a sleeping person. The animation for this suits a less friendly hunter. Next, we invest in the sneak perk to be 40% harder to detect and no longer set off enemy mines. And then at level 16, we're getting the second rank of sniper. This rank is phenomenal and a ton of fun. It gives our non-automatic scoped hunting rifle a chance to knock down its target. This actually happens fairly often, and it's beast for crowd control, cinematic moments, and also immobilizing an enemy while you finish it off. Speaking of Beast, we're then getting the second rank of Lone Wanderer and at this rank we take 30% less damage from everything and we gain plus 100 carry weight when playing without a companion. We're then getting the third rank of Rifleman to cause 60% more non-automatic rifle damage and ignore 20% of target armor. We're then going to be getting the second rank of Scrouncher to find even more ammo and then the first rank of Demolition Expert at level 20. We're actually doing a triple right here, getting the second rank of Demolition Expert at level 21 and the third rank at 22. With three ranks of this perk, the Hunter will cause 75% more explosives damage, have a throwing arc for grenades and also also affect a larger area with these explosives. Remember to use explosives prior to gaining these perks, but obviously you'll be dealing with bigger creatures now, so you'll need the extra damage. Also, this character may have been an expert at setting mines, but he never knew how to create them. Now, however, he does. This whole explosives phase has basically been added to the repertoire of combat perks being used, not only because enemies will become tougher, but also because tougher enemies will start becoming more common. At level 23, we get the fourth rank of sneak, and we're not actually getting rank five. We didn't think this build needed it too badly. With four ranks of the sneak perk, the hunter will be 50% harder to detect and running will no longer adversely affect stealth. This will be great for getting in and out of cover quickly without being detected. We're then going to get the second rank of night person and what this does is increase our nighttime perception and intelligence bonus from plus two to plus three. This is going to benefit our VATS accuracy and leveling speed even more. We're also going to gain night vision while sneaking. 
At level 26, the Hunter invests in the second rank of Concentrated Fire, so now every attack on the same body part in VATS will gain plus 15% accuracy. Following this is the third rank of Sniper, and this is very useful for this build. What it does is give our non-automatic scoped rifle plus 25% accuracy to headshot in VATS, and this is great for killing big game from far away. Another great perk, Penetrator, is next. Rank 2 of Penetrator is the final rank, and we're able to shoot through bits of cover in VATS without the previous accuracy penalty. Another great use of Penetrator is taking out a sentry bot by shooting straight through its armor and into its fusion cores. Next, we double dip in the infamous Mr. Sandman perk, completing all three ranks at level 30. Now the Hunter's silenced arsenal will do a colossal 50% more additional sneak attack damage. At level 31, the damage continues with a fourth rank of Rifleman, and this will make our rifles do 80% more damage, ignore 25% of target armor, and have a slight chance of crippling a limb. The cripple effect is great if you target the leg of a creature or a person trying to escape. We're then getting some health insurance over levels 32 and 33 with two ranks of the Medic perk. We're not getting any more ranks than this, and because we're a stealth character and we should be avoiding damage, we don't need them anyway. With two ranks of Medic, this build will be able to restore 60% of max health by using a stim pack and remove 60% of max potential radiation by using right away. The hunter then learns to navigate through a new type of environment, water, by getting the first rank of the Aquaboy perk. This is a bit of a role-playing perk choice and it's going to give the hunter the ability to breathe underwater and not take any radiation damage from swimming. This will let the hunter traverse the outdoors much faster and can be used to stay out of enemy view from a distance. The perk choice at level 35 is the final rank of Demolition Expert and this rank is one of the coolest for the build. Not only will it make your explosives do double damage, but it also allows you to make mines and grenades explode for double damage damage when shot in vats. This means after planting down mines as traps, you can shoot them just before a creature runs over them, causing it to explode for a lot more damage than if you simply left it there. You can also throw a grenade into a group of enemies and shoot it before it even touches the ground. Next, we're getting the third rank of Scrounger to find more ammunition for all our guns, and we will not be getting the fourth rank for this build. We're then investing in agility over levels 37 and 38, and then we're finishing off the gun nut perk. Now we can do whatever we want with our guns, giving them high damage, low recoil, and other superior enhancements. Finally, at level 40, we're getting the final rank of Lone Wanderer, and now, when traveling without a companion, we'll dish out 25% more damage with everything. Coming into the 40s, the Hunter is going to be getting both ranks of Action Boy over level 41 and 42. This will make action points regenerate 50% faster, and this is extremely useful for ensuring constant VATS usage if that's what you need. It will also allow you to sprint more without having to worry as much about saving AP for VATS. Now this build is going to want the agility bobblehead, and in combination with our earlier agility investment, the ninja perk will be available. We'll actually be getting all three ranks of this perk right now. The perk is absolutely insane for a melee stealth character, however, it will still greatly benefit a ranged build like the Hunter. With all three ranks, our ranged sneak attacks will do three and a half times as much normal damage, and this is perfect for taking out huge creatures fast. This will make slaying Mylurk queens and behemoths easier than ever before. Speaking of which, these creatures become even more susceptible to the hunter at level 46 when he unlocks Rifleman 5. Rifleman 5 makes rifles do double damage, and it makes them ignore 30% of target's armor, which is amazing, and it gives the hunter an even larger chance of crippling an enemy's limb. The hunter killing capabilities are improved even further over the next three levels, with three perk points spent in the agility stat. With the bobblehead, this will take your agility to 10, meaning that you'll have a lot of action points and a lot of VATS proficiency. Finally, at level 50, this build gets the final rank of Concentrated Fire, and now every attack on the same body part gains plus 20% accuracy. This is phenomenal for guaranteeing a hit on a seemingly out of reach target, and the accuracy isn't the only bonus. Every attack on the same body part in VATS will also do 20% more damage. This makes VATS a lot more powerful than standard scope shooting, but do keep in mind that standard scoped shooting is still very effective. Using VATS can often come down to preference and mood. The end game special stats for the Hunter, including Bobbleheads and the special book, but not including gear, are 2 Strength, 10 Perception, 6 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 6 Intelligence, 10 Agility, and 3 Luck. Taking a look at the Hunter's gear, it's going to be quite easy to explain, so there's not a lot of need for splitting everything into early game, mid game, and end game gear. In regards to what you're wearing or carry to wear, it's going to be a Longshoreman outfit, the Explorer outfit, the Hazmat suit, and the Grey 
Grey Knit Cap. Obviously, the Grey Knit Cap, which gives you plus one luck, is worn with everything except the hazmat suit, and as you'd assume, we're carrying a hazmat suit in case we need to go hunting in irradiated areas like the Glowing Sea. The Explorer outfit and the Longshoreman outfit have very low resistances and were simply chosen for aesthetics and role-playing. You can switch between them depending on your mood and role-playing circumstance. Do remember that while we have low resistances, we are covered by things like our endurance, the Lone Wanderer perk, and our stealth capabilities and playstyle. The outfits can be purchased from various merchants and be sure to check out Tinker Tom's stock for the armored versions. When it comes to guns for an endgame hunter build, you're going to want a fully upgraded hunting rifle with a suppressor and a long scope. And as you can see, we chose not to get the marksman stock. We did this purely for aesthetics, so if you want a more modern look and a slightly better gun, feel free to get it. This is used for our long range shots, especially those fired while sneaking. And if you want to use the legendary hunting rifle known as Reba 2, you can. This hunting rifle makes you do 50% more damage against Myalurks and bugs, so it's great for exterminating some of those peskier enemy types. There's a link in the description to a guide we made on how to get it. In addition to Reba 2, we have a short range hunting alternative for any creatures that get too close. It's a combat shotgun fully upgraded with a reflex sight and a suppressor too. Because it has a suppressor similarly to your hunting rifle, you can take advantage of the Mr. Sandman perk, using sneak attacks at very short range. For the most part, however, this is the weapon you switch to when you get rushed from behind by a Deathclaw or swarmed by a pack of ghouls. If you want a legendary combat shotgun, you've got options such as Le Fossil Terribles, which we've also made a video on. And earlier in the game, before getting these weapons, you may want to use a pipe gun, which you've modified to be a sniper rifle. That said, you can find yourself a hunting rifle pretty early on anyway. For an early close range backup weapon, you'll want to use the double barrel shotgun, and remember that throughout your playthrough, you'll be using mines and grenades when need be. You can craft your own frag mines at a chemistry station and you'll be using mines a lot more than their thrown alternative. Mines can be placed in a formation around an area or concentrated in one spot and will be a massive help when you want to bait a dangerous enemy out in the open. You would have seen in this video how we defeat the behemoth at Swan's Pond. In regards to companions, the hunter is obviously not going to have any, he hunts alone. However, if you must have a companion, then dog meat can fit the theme of this build. Also, if you're playing this for the best results possible, you can temporarily get companions to max their affinity and unlock their perk. McCready's perk, Preston's perk, and Deacon's perk would all be great for the hunter. This character is definitely not much into building heaps of settlements, however, we think it could be cool if he built himself a nice looking hunter's house. Remember that after the Wasteland Workshop DLC comes out, you can have taxidermy creatures in your own home. You could also make an arena and make it your responsibility to track down certain creatures for the fights. And that concludes another highly requested Fallout 4 build on Fudge Muppet, The Hunter. If you enjoy hunting big wasteland creatures or simply thought this build was cool, be sure to like this video and share it on social media. Please do subscribe to Fudge Muppet, especially if you do love Fallout 4 builds and discussions, and definitely subscribe if you want to see DLC guides. Social media links are in the description if you're interested alongside all the guides that we've created to help this build. My name is Scott, this was The Hunter, and I look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon.